Welcome everyone, it's Dr. Shiva Ayadure. Today we're going to be talking about kale and cardiovascular health. Kale is a very nutrient-dense vegetable. So first of all, we're going to look at the cardiovascular system. There are three subsystems on how your heart works. The physical heart here, it has a blood vessels which are known as a vasculature, and then the blood, the stuff that the heart pumps and that goes through these blood vessels. Now the heart is a powerful muscle which is responsible for pumping the blood, the oxygenated blood it receives from the lungs. Oxy oxygenated blood gets pumped throughout your body. These arteries through all the capillaries, as your body consumes as oxygenated blood, it becomes deoxygenated, which gets pumped back to your heart, which then sends it up to the lungs, which gets oxygenated and the process continues and so on. Blood is not just the red stuff, which is a red blood cells, which carries oxygen, but blood also includes the white blood cells, the very important white blood cells, which support your immune system. So heart health is important for immune system function, plus your circulatory system. The lining of the veins, the lining of the arteries, and the lining of the capillaries are made up of endothelial cells. You're going to realize how important endothelial function is for your existence and for heart health. So that is a vasculature that your cardiovascular system has. We wanted to now start looking at how kale affected the cardiovascular system. Now think about what we're saying and we want to take a scientific systems approach. Well, there's a lot of science that's been done on kale. And so, so in order to do that, we use a very powerful technology that I created out of my work at MIT called Cytosol, which allows us to integrate the current research. So we can analyze kale using Cytosol and allows us to integrate the current research. So what is that current research? So if you were to look all over the world as of today, how much research has been done on kale, 23,647 articles done on kale. Quite amazing. In fact, there's been close to 400 clinical trials and for 118 years, kale has been researched. Cytosolve allows us to take all of this research, identify the relevant articles relative to cardiovascular systems, identify the molecular pathways, and then figure out which of the components in kale, which we're gonna share with you today, that kale is composed of different molecular compounds, affect the molecular pathways of cardiovascular system. I wanted to let you know that we use the technology here. We've helped many, many companies over the last 16 years, a lot of smart, smart, innovative companies, but we decided with all the mathematical models we created, why don't we try to use this to compute the best product we could think of from the science out there for reducing pain and inflammation, pain and discomfort. And that resulted in us creating MV25 using Cytosol. We're going to have more products that are going to be coming, but let me just show you what MV25 is about for those of you who haven't heard about it. But this is using Cytosol in a beneficial way, not to just do research, but find combination therapies. Hi, I'm Barbara Ann. My hands would cramp up so that I couldn't hold cards or knit or crochet. And they would go like that. Not have to use this when I played cards with my grandkids. And I'd start taking that MV25. After a bit, I was able to hold cards in my hand. Very, very little cramping, hardly at all anymore. MV25. Hi, my name is Sandy. I'm a Taekwondo instructor. I tore my ACL during Taekwondo. I had a lot of pain and limited mobility. I've been taking the MV25 for about six months now. After the first week, I noticed a big difference. After the second week, almost literally no pain. My name is Jeremy and I suffer from a lower back problem. Hurt my back at work years ago and I can go to the chiropractor, do all kinds of different things and nothing seems to help. And I decided to try MV25. I didn't notice a difference immediately, but within a few days, the pain went away and it stayed away. I've continued to take it. And even when I do things that I shouldn't do, it seems to go away a lot quicker than it ever did before. It's clean food certified. It's made in the US. If you go to vashiva.com right on the shop, you'll click there, or you can go right to mv25.life either way. And then from there, you can click on the bottle and you can order. Please take advantage of it because first of all, it's going to help you. It's going to help our movement and it really supports the fact that we want to take science-based approaches to natural products. Now we want to look at kale. First of all, kale's got macronutrients. So it's got fiber. It's got a lot of protein and nine essential and nine non-essential amino acids, a lot of fat relatively. Now it has a lot of micronutrients, five key carotenoids, five other key vitamins, and we got five key minerals, six key bioflavonoids. That gives you the 21 
one molecules. Here are the seven nutrients in kale that are good for cardiovascular health. The next thing I want to talk about is what are the health benefits of kale? Kale is very, very good for skin health. It's good for heart health. It's good for gut health. It's good for liver health. It's good for eye health. And it's good for immune health. Now, what are the eight biological effects? It's an antioxidant at the biological level. It has an antioxidant effect on your body. It's anti-inflammatory, gastroprotective. It's anti-cancerous, probiotic for your gut, anti-hypertensive, lowers hypertension, anti-diabetic, anti-arthrosclerotic, which means it breaks up plaque, all right? So those are the eight biological effects of kale. So as I mentioned, one of the key things here is endothelial, endothelial function. So I wanna talk about nitric oxide and heart health and why endothelial function matters. Nitric oxide is obviously a molecule and it's a potent vasodilator. That means it opens up blood vessels and it's key to maintaining blood pressure in your body. It's generated when ENOS, endothelial nitric oxide synthase catalyzes L-arginine, which is an amino acid. So that's one endothelial cell right there. When blood flows over it, that's your shear stress. And here's a little structure on your endothelial cell. It looks like a Christmas tree. That's called the glycocalyx right here. And the when blood flows over, this structure shakes and it moves. And that, guess what, releases ENOS. That's this chemical. So the movement of blood moves the glycocalyx and that is what releases says ENOS. Very powerful. And there's a whole, all these chemical pathways. So the body is a very, very interesting machinery. How does kale affect the cardiovascular system? And in order to understand this, we're going to look at three molecular systems. So those molecular systems are known to affect antihypertensive effect, hypertension, anti-diabetic effect, and anti-arthrosclerotic effect, which means the how does it affect? Now to review, in order to understand, remember there are those seven molecules. So these things work together to affect those three molecules molecular systems. This is in one of those molecular systems, the antihypertensive system. The nitrate from kale is converted to nitrite by oral bacteria. So when you eat, you chew kale. It's very important to chew. And the nitrite decomposes to nitric oxide. And the nitric oxide activates this enzyme called soluble guanylol cyclase, SGC. And SGC converts GTP to CGMP in the smooth muscles surrounding the blood vessels, and they lead to relaxation. The second system is the anti-diabetic effect, second molecular system. So how does this happen? Remember, endothelial dysfunction is caused by oxidative stress induced by superoxide and hydrogen peroxide. So when you have superoxide and hydrogen peroxide, not good chemicals in your endothelial cell. So right here, if you have superoxide here, and hydrogen peroxide, this screws up your endothelial. This leads to endothelial dysfunction and that leads to diabetes. That's not good. Now, what happens is, if you remember, quercetin and the vitamin E from the kale, they upregulate NRF2, very good molecule. And NRF2 promotes these two antioxidant enzymes, superoxide dismutase and catalase. And these two are very powerful enzymes which block superoxide and block hydrogen peroxide. And similarly, the vitamin E goes blocks the superoxide, so it neutralizes sizes these two not so good right superoxide hydrogen peroxide ros reactive oxygen species so it promotes the anti-diabetic effect because you dissuade endothelial dysfunction and finally the third molecular system is anti-arthrosclerotic effect which means the formation of plaque ldl which is the bad cholesterol low density lipoprotein that gets typically oxidized to ox ldl due to oxidative stress which comes from superoxide and this leads to arterial arterial plaque formation, you don't want this. So guess what happens? To, to intervene in this molecular system, the lutein, the zeaxanthin, the vitamin C, the vitamin E, and the quercetin, all of these very important players come in and they block the superoxide. So the LDL doesn't get converted to OX LDL, so you don't get the plaque formation. There you go. Is kale right for you? What you see here is kale increases the forces of transport. It stabilizes the forces of conversion which is also known as pitta in the Indian system or kapha, a storage, but it will increase transport like bowel movement, gas, bloating when you have that. Now, question is, everyone asks me, well, how much should I take? So let's talk about that. How much kale should you take and what the current science says? Well, for heart health, which is the antihypertension piece, in grams of kale powder daily. Okay, that's from Ide et al. 2016. Kale for skin health, the curly kale extract, that gives you 1650 micrograms of carotenoids, Meineke et al. 2017.
protein for eye health, and which is really related to age-related macular degeneration, about 15 milliliters of a beverage containing oleaginous extract of kale. That's what they used here, Arnold et al. 2013. Now, given that background, I also want to, I've talked about the great stuff of kale, how it can support your heart, but we also need to consider that kale, there are also some problems with kale, and there are four issues to consider. Well, if you are prone to certain allergies, be aware that too much of kale can cause in certain people certain skin rashes, hives. Not in everyone, but be aware of that. If you see skin rashes coming, be aware of that. The next thing is goiter, thyroid. Vegetables like kale, Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, very good for you, but they're known as goitrogens. If you have hypothyroidism, hypo, where your thyroid's already sort of working slow, and you eat lots of kale, too much kale, it's going to affect hypothyroidism. By the way, one way you can do that is there are seaweed, sea vegetables, to support your hypothyroidism, and I could do a whole video on that. So that's a second issue that you need to be aware of. Kidney stones and oxalates. What are oxalates? The green vegetables like spinach, I have to be very careful because not with oxalates, but spinach has something called a solanine. I'll get inflammation. My body type. Oxalic acid gets produced from these things called oxalates. And if you are prone to kidney stones, be careful with eating too many green vegetables. I'm not saying don't eat greens, but be aware. That's a, another issue. And the third is digestive bloating. If you're already prone to get bloating, some people go on these raw food diets and they eat too much kale and they get bloating. And then it's hard to frankly metabolize food and people actually put on weight. So we have to be aware there are problems with kale. And these are the four issues that you should consider. Is all kale good? And the real question comes down to organic versus conventional. Organic kale is preferred over conventionally grown kale. Now conventionally grown kale may contain over 18 different pesticides that are linked to lung, liver, kidney, thyroid toxicity, and are carcinogenic. And we know that organic farming produces healthier produce free of these pesticides. So if you're going to choose kale and you have the ability, please get the organic versus conventional or explore what you need to do to really clean that kale up. There's many, many different things. I'll do a video on that if you want. So again, when it comes to all kale is good, my position is no. If I were you, I would get organic kale. So finally, I also want to let you know that it is our movement and Cytosol was very instrumental in creating a clean, certified and certified raw labels and you'll see these on products if you go online and this is why and the certified clean label means the products are safe they means that farm to table how were they processed minimally processed and bioavailability of nutrients so the clean and raw certified are even a much higher standard than organic because it's not just about organic it's a number of constitutive things so keep an eye on that hi everyone this is dr shiva Dure. before we continue with this i want to just remind everyone that because of the massive censorship and shadow banning that still continues on social media platforms Platforms, I'd like you to click the link to continue watching this on our own platform at vashiva.com. Thank you very much.